Hello, I'm Bryson here with Hungry Generation Internship. Thank you guys for being with us today. Right now I have with me Pastor Vic Fomenko from California Coast Bible College. He was here with us uh, these past couple days teaching our interns. Uh, it was just been an amazing time. Uh, God is moving. I came into the class today and saw a bunch of people crying. The power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit was moving. It was an amazing time. And so Vic, thank you so much for being here with yeah. us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I love it. Yeah. I love this place. Well, we love having you here. Thank you. So um, before we get any further within this interview, um, we want to ask you, people want to know yeah. here, tell us a little about your story. Tell yeah. us a little about how you got saved, how you came to know the Lord. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, I grew up in a Christian home. My dad was a minister. I uh, grew up going to church a lot. Um, age seven is, I think, the time when I made a decision to feel like consciously, like, God, I think I want you to be the Lord of my life. Uh, but by the age of 12, um, is when really I felt like the call of God was on my life through, through a prophetic word, through a few things that were spoken from my grandma to parents to some leaders in my life, but specifically a prophetic word at the age of 12. I got filled with the Holy Spirit at the age of 12, and that's kind of really where I started developing an actual like, personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, so I'd say from 12, and then since then it's just grown, and I've grown so much. I feel like um, every year it's just it's it's getting better and better and uh yeah loving it man love love love, love being with jesus it used to be my, my parents faith my my dad's faith and uh now it's like man it's my own faith with jesus so it's cool that's awesome yeah. that's so awesome to hear so then in this whole journey you said you got saved at 12 and yeah. now you know you're much older than 12. yeah how did you find yourself uh getting into ministry what did that yeah. look like for you yeah at 12, um, the word I got was, Vic, you're going to start uh, studying the Bible because you're going to preach and teach the word. And so I remember that really impacting me at the age of 12. And I remember going back from that service, actually coming home, uh, picking up my Bible for the first time and actually picking up a pen and a paper and saying, okay, Lord, if I'm going to study the Bible <laughs> to preach and teach it, like, I want you to teach me. And I at remember opening up old. at 12 years old. Wow. Uh, so I remember actually opening up uh, my Bible for the first time. I went to the parable of the sower and the seed. And that was yeah. the first time I ever opened the Bible. I was like, God, start teaching me. And so I started writing stuff down. I felt like I was giving me some revelation on the scripture um, at 12. And then from that point on, like I actually started to even, even use my bedroom as a place where I met, uh, met with the Lord. And I would, back in the day, that was like, I don't know, I'm 34 now. I was born in 85. So this was like early, mid, mid 90s or so. And whatever worship music we had back then, like I forget, like Michael W. Smith, <laughs> DC Talk, those guys. But like I would just turn Sonic it on. Flood. Oh yeah, totally. Sonic <laughs> Flood. Like turn on audio because tapes in my room. I remember waking up early in the morning and saying, lifting my hands, just walking in my room, saying, Jesus, I want to meet with you. I want to worship you. And uh, and just at that young age, I think uh, the end of middle school, high school, God started really encountering me, and I started kind of developing that. So ministry is not something I ever wanted to go into. I thought God picked the wrong guy. I remember at 12 when, yeah. when I got the word that like you're going to preach and teach the word. I was like, God, I think you got the wrong guy. Like I was shy. I was a stutter. I wasn't smart. Um, but then by the time I was in high school, um, I really felt the hand of the Lord on my life. And uh, I f wanted to actually study. So I actually ended up going to college. And since then, like I've never opened up a door. I've just been like, God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm just going to be obedient. I'm going to step into it. And so yeah. it's kind of always been that way. Like I've been um, from Spokane, Washington, to yeah. Seattle, Washington, to Dallas, Texas, to Ventura, California now, kind of all over the place, but God's really divinely directed us. And so it's kind of just been a place of like, God, I don't feel qualified, but if you call me, I'm gonna say yes, yeah. and uh, I'm just gonna go wherever you tell me to go. So that's kind of how it's been. It's just been a, a daily obedience, you know? Wow, that's yeah. so awesome, that's so awesome. You know, uh, uh, I, you were telling me how at the, the Bible college that you teach at now, that you oversee, one of the things that you really teach and focus on is spiritual formation. Yeah. Uh, for those who are gonna be watching this or listening now, can you dive into that a little bit? What is spiritual yeah. formation? What, is, what does that mean? Totally. And um, how can that benefit us? Give us some insight. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. So um, I've been teaching at our Bible college and this is our eighth year. In, in May, we're gonna graduate our eighth year of wow. students. Um, wow. And I love it. It's a passion of my life. I love to impart into generation uh, the things that God's been putting in me. But I teach several classes. One of my favorite one is spiritual formation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a class that has been evolving and developing. Uh, it used to be called uh, personal disciplines. And then it's evolved from there because it's way more than just the discipline life. Yeah. It's, uh, but really, it's, a, um, it's an impartation of like how God transforms us. How do we have fellowship with him? How do we, starting from like identity, like, who are we in Christ? Like, yeah. how do we have intimate intimacy with him? Like, what are some of those Christian practices that we do called Bible reading, prayer, um, yeah. fasting, 
uh, journaling, uh, you know, hearing God's voice, all that kind of stuff. So we kind of go in through a lot of different things, but I love it because I love seeing students come in, maybe even with like a religious pers perspective about like what yeah. it is to like have fellowship with God, like, you know, maybe a structured time or whatever. It's like, I just, you know, it's, it's always like, looks like this and to see how, where they start to understand not only the, the Christian practices as like a tradition or a structure or religion, but yeah. really like seeing God for who he is. I think understanding the nature of God and understanding the nature of who we are in Christ, I think those two revelations are some of the most significant. So I really try to unpack like the nature of God, his goodness, how much yeah. he loves us, how, what, he, what, uh, uh, what he thinks about us, yeah. and then who we are in Christ as really the foundation for then the things that we talked about, like intimacy with the Holy Spirit, yeah. how to have fellowship with him. And then finally, how do we put some of those things like fasting, Bible reading, praying, Sabbath, you know, rest, yeah. all those things into now a real fellowship and relationship with God. Because yeah. I think for, for me, for so many years, I went into like the Christian practices without really understanding how good God was, yeah. his nature. Oh, yeah. And then also uh, did a lot of Christian practices without understanding who I am in Christ. I, I, I didn't realize that like how much of an orphan I was in the Lord, yeah. still begging for stuff when actually I'm a son. And so to me, spiritual formation, to me, it starts with, hey, let's understand who God is. Let's understand who we are in Christ. We're sons and daughters. Yeah. And now we can have the intimacy and fellowship. And now we can add some of those things that like we teach about in terms of spiritual disciplines and now it's no longer a structure now it's like actually free life giving yeah. you know so yeah but yeah that's one of my favorite courses That's to so teach awesome. and uh it's it's cool to see students come in and then leave just you know six months or you know a semester later five few months three four months later and just transform it's awesome yeah that's so yeah. awesome i i love i love that you said that you started at, you started the class as a personal discipline and yes. it turned into spiritual transformation. Yes. I think that's just so beautiful because oftentimes, and I think uh, those who are watching, they've probably been in a situation, wh whether they're a, you know, a beginner Christian or yeah. someone who's been a Christian for a long time, learning how to navigate, how to live the Christian life, yeah. and then without having a, a true understanding of who God is and yeah. who he says you are, these disciplines can just honestly be destructive for us. Yeah. And totally. so I, I just, that. I love, I love what you're doing yeah, over there thanks, uh, in California and, and just imparting, imparting identity into people and, yeah. and showing them who they are in Christ. Yeah, and amen. so that's, a, that's amazing. What is one thing, maybe one thing that you can share uh, with those who are watching, who may be listening, who is saying, hey, yeah. I don't actually feel like I, I know my identity in Christ. Yeah. What's one thing do you feel like, and yeah. I'm putting you on the spot yeah, a little bit. Yeah, this is good, bit, man. I love it. But what's one thing that you might be able to say to yeah. them that, that really is key to their identity in Christ. Yeah, totally. I think um, identity is so important. I think it's the foundational thing, like knowing who you really are. But I think what's happened is we have gotten into even a culture and a time where the identity message is preached everywhere. Like you can go to almost any church, any denomination, and people are talking about identity, who I am in Christ. We sing songs about it like, yeah. I am who you say I am. I am a child of God. And it's become almost like mm -hmm. we've adopted the lingo and the words. Yeah. So people now are even saying like, you know, I'm a child of God, like, who are you? Well, and, they, they, and they learn yeah. the answer. Yeah. I'm a child of God, I'm righteous, I'm holy, I'm accepted. And yet the problem that I've found is that actually, it's not revelation, it's, the, it's information. Mm -hmm. Wow, And so actually, so it's not revelation because information only makes you more religious, mm -hmm. but it's the revelation of that. So what I've found is that I don't actually want to just teach identity. What I want to, to show people is that they can actually go to the secret place with the yeah. Father and hear Him say, hey, I love you, yeah. you're my son, you're my daughter, like yep. I'm proud of you, I'm pleased with you. And so I think it, uh, it's, it, it's not an identity message, I think it's actually being intimate with the Father and letting Him speak to you yeah. what that is. So I would say like if, if you've struggled with that, I would say uh, go to the secret place, the yeah. place where it's just you and God, and just say, God, will you show me who I am? Yeah. Like when you open up your word, don't go try to read just the logos, the written word of God, but say, God, this is living, this is active. Like, can you show me who I am? What do you think about me? How much do you love me? And start asking questions of God and let him answer because when he tells you something, game over. Yep. You could go to all the Bible <laughs> colleges in America and hear the message, memorize it, and even preach it. Because yeah. I actually became good at like even preaching the message that I didn't necessarily even live. Like yeah. I preached the intimacy message. I preached some of the revelations of sonship yeah. when I got them as like a, a theme and a message, yeah. but it wasn't from like personal revelation. So 
I would, my highest recommendation is don't go seek knowledge in and of itself, but go seek the Lord and he will give you revelation knowledge. Yeah. And so um, that's just my recommendation. That's, but that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. No, that's so true. Uh, the only way to really get the, this kind of knowledge mm -hmm. into this kind of knowledge is through prayer. Yeah, it's totally. It's through spending time hearing, hearing with him. God. Yeah. I love that you said the secret place because yeah. it's, it's in that place when you're just alone with God. Yeah, totally. When you're able to just have him speak to you, it, yeah. one word from him could totally just transform your life compared to a thousand words in a, in a school or in exactly. a class or anything like that. So, exactly. So good. Yeah, it's, that's awesome. Well, thank you so yeah. much for sharing that with yeah, us. Um, I would I like to ask you actually to pray for um, okay. the people who are watching, people who yeah. may feel like, you know what, I really want, I really want to begin to step uh, into my full identity. Yeah. I want to. Yeah. I want to step into my calling as a Christian. Okay. Um, man, I want to, uh, but I, I need. I, I need prayer. Uh, yeah. Just pray for people. Just. I want to uh, just impart yeah. into them. Okay. Uh, identity. Come on. Awesome. Let's do it. Father, we just thank you for every single person that is watching live right now or is going to watch this. God, I just speak to that person that's right there behind that phone, that screen, God, and I just declare, God, that they're not just going to know that they're called. God, but they're gonna just feel the, the, the fire and the power of God. I just speak even right now. I speak to that, to that young man, to that young woman. I speak to that, to, uh, to, to, to that man and woman of God that, that is right there. And I just declare, Father, that they're not just gonna hear it. Yeah. It's not just gonna be information, God, but I just declare revelation from God. God, I thank you, Father, that even the secret place is not just gonna be a place God, where we just go, and it's not just a place of discipline, it's not just a place where just there's a closed door, but God, I just thank you, Father, that, that sons and daughters of God are gonna understand that you're with them all the time, that you're, that you're inside of them, that they are the temple that carries you, God, and I just declare that they are gonna know and understand and hear your voice. God, I just declare over a generation that feels like they haven't heard you, that has felt distant from you, that has felt like they can't even approach you because of guilt, shame, and condemnation, I break off guilt, shame, condemnation, feeling less than. God, and I just speak right now, God, that, that, that sons and daughters are gonna be revealed, that hear the voice of God. I declare open ears to you right now. I declare your ears are gonna hear God. Your eyes are gonna see him in Jesus' name. That it's no longer gonna be just a book it's, it's going to be Jesus showing up in your room. It's no longer going to just be a song that you sing. It's going to be a cry of your heart that God's going to meet. So I just declare that over you. Your, may your eyes be opened. May your ears be opened. May God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know him deeply. May everything compared to knowing God be like what Paul said, total garbage, rubbish, trash compared to knowing him personally. So I just speak that over you. May you know him, hear him, and see him. And I just declare a hearing of faith over you right now in Jesus' name. From this day forward, everything is going to shift. And I declare revelation and truth and intimacy with God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we got one last thing for you. Yeah. Like I told you I was going to do this, I'm going to yeah. spring this on you. Cool. We have some rapid fire questions for it. you to see who, who you are, what you're about. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to just go through them real quick. Okay. Cookies or cake? Cookies. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Day or night? Day. Morning or evening? Morning. Text message or call? Text. Summer or winter? Summer. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one here. Hungry Generation Internship or Hungry Generation Internship? Yes. <laughs> I love Hungry Generation. The church internship, the people. You guys are awesome, man. Love you guys. Uh, we love you too. Yeah. Come well, on. guys, thank you so much for yeah. watching. Thank you for being with us. Uh, tune in next time. And those of you who are interested in our internship, be sure to check us out at www.hungrygen.com slash internship. We actually have registration open for both the summer and the fall. So if that's you, you want to be a part yeah. of it, make sure to sign up today. Change your whole world, man. Come Amen. out here. These guys are awesome. Amen. God bless you guys.